Hey, it's Mark Pudos, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to, good see, to you. see you. Um, we've got the dude buddy, nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things? They're great. It's snowy here in uh, on Alaska, Wisconsin. I've I've read about snow. I've seen it on TV. Have not experienced it in quite some time. <laughs> and my partner in crime, who's not experiencing any snow, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Ah, oh, happy man. It's a good. It's a good day to be a land investor. Honestly, woke up, had a nice bike ride. Didn't set an alarm. Wow. Think about that. Didn't set an alarm today. I haven't set an alarm since I got an Uller in in years, or, or at least a year and a half. It kind, um, of goes, it kind of goes along with our topic today, right? Like setting goals. Set, yeah, we, ex- exactly, exactly. But I think if if you're looking for a gift, get yourself like like the the Uller or the the what is it sleep eight dot com. Uh, we've got putting in the reps, Taria Harris. Tria, how are you? I'm well. How are you guys? It's good to see you. And last but not least, Brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We're going to do a topic I know that is near and dear, I think, to everyone's hearts. But Tate had mentioned it, goal setting. For 2022, I can't believe how fast 2021 has been. But now it's time to get serious about setting goals. And I think instead of asking what your your goals are going to be for 2022, because we're all going to have probably different goals, I think it'd be more interesting a topic like how do you set your goals? What types of, of systems or processes do you and your team use? So I know he loves going first when Mike Zano's not here. Let's just pick on dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Boston. Scott, when you're setting your goals for 2022, how do you do it and how do you communicate those to the team? All right. So hopefully you can't hear my dog barking. Um, so I have a, kind of an interesting system that, that I go through, uh, about this time every year, I I go back and consult kind of this master, uh, spreadsheet that I have. And it's not only for business, but it's for personal life as well. Keep track of assets, liabilities, keep track of, uh, the, the business, uh, any assets and liabilities within the business, the enterprise value of the business, that type of thing. Uh, when it comes down to the business level, you know, how many mailings did we do monthly on average? You know, what's our monthly passive income, that type of thing. And it's kind of a neat thing because I look at where we were a year ago and it shows me how far we've grown and that helps me set goals for the future. Um, and that's, that's something I kind of took away from the clinic. I always used to do that with my, my patients. I'll, I'd say to them, you know what, let's see how far you've come compared to when you started. Oh, that's great. So that's kind of a philosophy I've always utilized and I continue to do that in my personal life and business. Personal things I keep track of are, you know, what's my body weight? What's my BMI? How many, how many hours or how many minutes did I work out this year? That type of thing. How many books did I read? That type of thing. So, so I kind of have this master spreadsheet that I consult uh, yearly. I enter the data. I compare, you know, can compare and contrast and see how much we've grown. And that helps me set goals for the, for the following year. I love it. I love it. And uh, man, you've just been on fire this year with, with, with those spokes on the wheel in, in your life, especially uh, with health. So good on you. And again, comparison is the thief of happiness. So I don't try to compare myself to Scott Bossman in order to increase my self-esteem. The technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how do you communicate your goals? Uh, and do you have a system? Yeah. I mean, um, first of all, you know, I think some of what Scott described there in terms of kind of looking at the past and, and what you've done over the previous 12 months is really important. So in order to do that, keeping metrics along the way becomes 
a key p- part of that so that you're not, you know, reaching December and going, all right, uh, now I got to look at the entire year and figure out how many mailings we sent or how many sales we made or what have you. Um, if you're keeping those metrics along the way, it gives you a nice tool to be able to check in on that stuff. Um, but, you know, just, just like we teach our students, um, we operate with, with the 12 week year philosophy. So we look at it essentially a quarter at a time and we set goals according to that. So one of the consistent goals that we're always setting is, is sales goals in the land business. So, um, you know, I typically set those goals based on our past performance, but then I have to communicate those to a sales manager and I have to think about how can I get a sales manager or another VA in line with, with my desires. You know, if I want to sell 20% more properties or 50% more properties or whatever, like I can communicate that to my, my salesperson, but if I don't give them any type of incentive in order to help me achieve that, it's less likely to happen. So um, we'll put a bonus structure in place uh, based on the 12 week year plan of achieving a certain amount of sales or a certain amount of, you know, purchases or different things like that in the business to, to try to keep us on track to achieve certain goals through the year, um, one quarter at a time or 12 weeks at a time. Um, that's, that's how we like to look at it. Yeah. The, the 12 week year is, so, is such a powerful way to do it because it just compresses it and it does put that built in intensity with it. And I, I know our, our coaching clients, you know, really, love it and and helps them make adjustments so much faster and and reevaluate their goals. Taria put in the reps Harris. How do you think about your goals for 2022 and then how do you communicate those to your team? Um so I apologize I have a 4 month old here with me so you might hear him my my nephew so if you hear him ignore him. Um so we do something very similar. We look at how we did last year. One, it's, it's a motivator for us. If we can look back and see progress, it just makes us feel better about what we're actually doing. So we look back over the last year, um, how well did we do? Where did we, you know, reach goals we set? Where did we not reach goals that we set? Why didn't we reach those goals? And then we put together um, where we want to be in a year, but then we break it down based on the 12 weeks. So if I want to have um, my sales goal as, you know, X and how many per quarter does that mean? And then we, we back it all the way down to, well, then how many ads do we need to post and how many, you know, we, so we, we go that granular, um, the same as we teach our coaching clients. Like if you have goals and we're setting up your goals, how do we actually reach them? And we put in manageable steps, um, in order to do that. We like to write out our goals so that we see them, um, Previously, we I would do like vision boards and things like that. We haven't gone that far with our land business, but we do like to write them out so that we can actually see them and view them. And as we're reaching them, we like to kind of check off. OK, yes, we hit this goal. So it's also another motivator for us as well. I, I love that. I love that. There's, there's no better feeling or there's very few better feelings than checking something off. Mm-hmm. Isn't it even, even just like when I go to the, the Costco, just check off. I got eggs. Yeah. It just feels good. It's productive, right? It's productive. It's productive. Uh, big Papa, Tay Litchfield. How, yeah. are you, how do you set goals? You know, uh, we do pretty much what everybody else discussed here. Um, we're looking at the past to help us, you know, set goals or predict the future. Um, one of the goals that we're going to focus on real heavy is buying more property. I want to buy more property in 2022 than I ever have before. Um, Whether that means I'm buying from other investors, whether it means I'm doing more mailing, I want to increase our property holdings and I want to do it by a lot because I've realized that there's, you know, a direct correlation between sales and inventory. And so I know that one way to help my team sell more property is to own more property, control more assets. And so that's one of our main goals that I'm going to be focusing on. I know that uh, everything else falls into place for us, at least in our team and our system, when we have a full uh, full list of inventory on the shelves. The way that we're going to do it, we're going to go to places where we've had success. And we're going to repeat it. Pretty simple. I'm not not reinventing anything over here. I love it. I love it. And 
Last but not least, Scott Todd. How are you setting goals? You know, Mark, one, one of the things I do that's a little bit different is um, instead of necessarily starting off with what I want to accomplish like next year or in the next 12 months, what I like to do is I like to start to think about like, okay, well, what does my life look like? What, what do I want it to look like? Right? Like what are the big things that I want to happen in my life? And if, and it's not just next year, it's ever like ever, ever. Okay. So let, let's just say that, I mean, you can pick it, you can put weight, you can pick net worth, you can pick relationships, all of those things that you might want to pick. And what I'll do is I'll start to sit down and think, okay, like three to five years from now, what do I want that to look like? And then what I will do is I don't necessarily have a a specific goal that says next year I will achieve X. It's more of I'm working for those bigger things and I'm not necessarily worried about whether it gets accomplished next year or not. What I'm looking at is the bigger picture down the field a little bit. And the reason I'm trying to do that is because that bigger picture stuff will drive me more than, you know, a goal for next year or next quarter. And the problem with the goal for next year, next quarter is this. If I get behind, then you get deflated, you get you know, defeated as opposed to you'll always with the right time horizon, you'll always achieve those goals. So I like to think about the bigger picture and start working towards those bigger things. And I don't, you know, they always talk about smart goals, you know, specific, measurable, actionable, uh, with a, with realistic, realistic with a time, you know, the thing is, is like that time doesn't have to be one year in a corporate environment. They tell you, make your smart goals for next year. So you can get evaluated. Yeah. That doesn't work too well when, when you're running your own company, I don't think. So I like to think of the bigger picture and the longer term, longer term piece and you'll be amazed. I mean, if you go down that path, you'll be amazed at, at how farther along you are at getting that goal quicker than doing it year by year and going, well, I want to do that in five years. Why not this year? Why not? Why not now do it now? Yeah. I, I, I love that philosophy. And, um, I have, I've actually started to adopt something similar where I'll talk to the team, like, look, we're going to set goals and our time horizon is 20 years. Right. And well, we, we, you know, like oh, 20 years. Okay. It takes all the pressure off. And in, in that sense, it, it also, I know that it's not going to take probably 20 years if we want to 10 X the business. And then Scott, we were talking, I was looking at this, a diagram that I, I'm going to share uh, with the community when I'm, when I'm doing my uh, digest, which is uh, the six spokes of a wheel, right? Think of a wheel. And if one of those spokes is missing, well, the wheel continue to, to roll. Okay. It might be a little bumpy two spokes. Yeah. Still a little bumpy, but three spokes, that thing's not going to roll real well. You know, Tate, you know, understands from cycling. So I'm looking at, you know, body, like my health, right? Um, do I have to have a six pack like Scott Bossman? No but I want to be healthy, right? Mind, do I want to have a calm mind, a clear mind um, for sure? Uh, love in our lives, absolutely. Uh, so, or love relationships. You know, one of the, the spokes in here that we don't talk enough about is play. How much play are we getting, right? Um, and then of course, money, because money is important, absolutely. And, uh, and the last is our work, right? Do we, are we feel a purpose at work? Do we feel like we're growing as a person at work? Um, and are we achieving our, our work goals? Those types of things. And so for me, I, I'm looking at all of those, those spokes and like 20, uh, 21, it was all great, right? It all, it all sort of uh, uh, was, was kind of came together for me, but can't take that for granted. Want to set really good goals for 2022 as well. And think about the things that money can't buy, which is, you know, can't buy me a, a calm mind, can't buy me a fit body, and it certainly can't buy me a, a house full of love. So these are like the three, you know, major goals. And then, of course, as we talk to the team, that 20 year time horizon and accomplishing the goals and what that needs to support the business. And then I'm just there to support it. So uh, I thought this is really helpful and valuable way for people to think about 
goals, goal setting. You can do everything from the 12 week year all the way to a, a, a really long time horizon or a hybrid po- approach as well. Uh, they're all effective. I think the one thing that you probably wouldn't want to do is not have any goals because whatever is not measured is not managed. So have something for sure. Just a little shout out to our sponsor today, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call and learn more how to start building that passive income for 20 22. And of course, we're going to go to tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, what do you got? I voluntarily took one for the team here because I have a book that really applies to what we're talking about. It's called the gap in the gain by Benjamin Hardy. Uh, And what it talks about is measuring your progress in life in the gain instead of the gap. So many of us think about the gap and all of our failures and uh, all of the, you know, if something negative happens to you during the day, um, we focus on that and uh, you're in the gap, right? Well, you need to spin it. And there's actually a psychological term for this too. I think it's called uh, cognitive flexing or uh, cognitive flexibility, something like that, where you take a negative event and you spin it. Uh, but you can do that really with any, any event in your life, whether, you know, whether it's family or work or, or, or a ch- job change or anything like that. But they also talk about how to set your goals in relation to where you were compared to where you want to be. And uh, when you look at progress in that way, you're in the gain. So when I look at where I was a year ago, in my business, my health, that type of thing, and see how much growth I've experienced over the last year. I'm in the game, and then I can use the, my current mindset to, to help set goals for the future. So it's, it's a great book. Uh, I would appreciate it. I, I would uh, recommend it. I love it. Benjamin Hardy, he's got uh, how, who, not how, gap in the game. He, he, there's like two other books you recommended to me. He's, that guy's on fire. He's great. Yeah. Willpower doesn't work is good. Willpower doesn't work. Um, there's another one that I read. Anyways. All right. He's got a bunch of really good books. Uh, anyways, I want to thank the listeners. Remind them the only way that Scott Bossman is going to continue to recommend great books to us is if you do us three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, which right now has a value of 1.2 million crypto dollars according to the latest Binance exchange that I've been checking. So there you go. Scott, you're, you're, you're wondering, no? Never heard of the crypto dollar, but all right. I guess it's one you just made up. I made it up. Why not? Fine. You could, you could have said like Dogecoin or something. I mean, you know. I, 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 I didn't want to lose the listeners. He's more of a Shibu Inu kind of guy. The, the, minute that you, the minute that you said 1.2 billion or a million, whatever you said, you lost them. Okay. <laughs> like seriously, you lost them. But that said, you do whatever you want to do. It's your show. I, you know what? I'm going, to refra- I'm going to reframe that comment. And instead of being hurt by it, I'm going to say, I am really grateful that I get to spend that time with all of you even if once in a while I get insulted. There's no insulting. I'm just perplexed by right. the, the, the currency. That's all. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. We get to do this. I'm grateful. Yeah. What, hey, we might day need to we shut it down because I have a brisket on the fire right now. That hurt. All right. I want to, uh, yeah, let's do this. One, <laughs> two, three. Let's let bring, bring, them bring. 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 Go enjoy that brisket, Scott Todd. Go enjoy. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.